To start this video series, I just want to get us up and running really quickly with a containerized PHP application. So what we're going to do here is use this repository I have that has the Docker Compose file that will build us a containerized PHP application, and within it we will install a Laravel application. So the first thing we're going to do is just head over to my console here, and we will clone this repository. Now inside of that repository, we have our Docker Compose file. And just following along the, the instructions here, we can see that I just immediately tell us to docker compose up. So we'll do docker compose up and then do dash D, which is makes it a daemon. It pushes it into the background so we don't have the docker logs being output into the foreground here. Now we can see here that it's actually downloading some images where it says polling from shipping docker nginx and shipping docker php. I don't have these images on my local computer, so it downloads them. Now other Docker container images I am using include Redis and MySQL. Those are already on my computer, but if they weren't, they would have downloaded. Now this is actually running already. We can do docker compose ps, and we'll see a listing of the containers here. The database one, which is MySQL, Nginx, PHP, and Redis. Continuing on the guide I have here, we can see that the next step here is to run another Docker command, and it's actually going to run composer create project. So we're just going to run composer inside of our PHP container here. Now the reason we don't do this on my home system, in other words on my Macintosh here that has PHP 5.5, is because I need PHP 5.6 at least to run this Laravel 5.3 application. Now this container happens to have PHP 7, so I'm all set there. So what I'm doing here is doing docker run, so I'm making a new container, it to make it interactive, rm to delete this container when we're done using it, I share our current directory and set it to the slash op directory inside of the container, I want to use the network which I'll explain in a future video, I'm reusing our PHP image that has composer installed on it so I can run composer commands with it. And this is just going to do exactly what create project normally does with composer, it's going to create it in a folder here called application. All right, that's complete. We now have a Laravel application in our application directory. Let's do the next step here, which is a very similar command. It's a composer command once again. I'm just going to require the pRedis Predis library in order to get Redis support inside of Laravel. In this case, we're going to use the Redis container for caching and also for our session storage. All right, that is installed. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to make a new tab and go to localhost. And we can see we have the Laravel application up and running, which is perfect. I'm going to go back here. Now the next step here says to edit the application M file, and we're going to do that, and I'll show you why. Now we're going to cover the Docker Compose file in the next video, but I want to cover one thing real quick. Now we have an Nginx, a PHP, a Redis, and a MySQL container here running. Each one has a name, and I've named them fairly obvious names. One thing to know here is that because we created this all inside of a network, which I've called AppNet, we can refer to each container by their name, and that will resolve to the IP address of the container automatically. So from PHP, I can say I want to connect to the Redis host to get to Redis, and the DB host to connect to MySQL, and that will resolve to the correct IP address. So what that means in reality is that we'll edit our application.m file, and I can set my DB host to DB. And that, once again, as I said, is going to go to the correct IP address of the MySQL container that's running. Now we'll do the same for Redis as well, which we just named Redis. And here we just have to change the cache driver and the session driver to Redis as well. Now these two Redises here are the driver names, not the host names. They just happen to be the same here. Save and quit that. Head back over here, make sure this still works. All right, now. Let's finish this off by just testing out that we can actually connect to our database. I'm going to do PHP artisan make auth to get our auth scaffolding provided by Laravel, and then we will run the migrations to have PHP create the tables for the authentication. So PHP artisan migrate is all we're going to run here. Once again, I'm using a container to run these commands so that I get PHP 7 so that it can connect to the network that these containers are all running in and I am able to connect to the database and run these migrations. So now if I head back over here, we should see new links on our home page, and we do. So let's just register a user quick. All right, and we can see that I am logged in and that worked. Let's log back out, and we'll log back in just to double check that the database is actually saving things. And it is perfect. All right, great. So we have our Docker Compose containers running. If you wanted to, we could do Docker Compose stop. That will stop them, but not destroy these. So the Docker Compose containers no, are no longer running. We can do Docker Compose PS. 
we can see that these have exited. I can do docker ps, we can see there's no running. If I do docker ps-a, we'll see it has the container still, they're just not running. I could restart them with docker compose start. We'll see docker ps, they are running. I can head back here and still see I'm still logged in. And I could even do this. So if I do docker compose down, this actually destroys the container. So it doesn't just stop them, but destroys them and removes the network we told them to create. One thing it did not destroy is our volumes. And I'm going to go into this in another video as well. But if I do docker compose up to create, recreate these containers, we'll see that the database still exists. So I'm going to re uh, refresh here. I'm kicked out because the session storage no longer existed. Let's try to log back in. And I can because the database still exists. So I'm going to cover both the networks and the volumes in future videos after covering the Docker Compose file in a little bit more detail.